Hello everyone, this is Fahad. I am back. I um, want to take a look at one of the stocks. The name of the company is Cooper Companies. Simple COO, Cooper Companies. Once again, as usual, we're going to evaluate this stock based on three elements. Okay, technicals, option activity, and fundamentals. So, technicals, fundamentals, and option activity. Those three elements, we're going to take a look at it. Okay, so what I want to take a look at is this technical first. So, here's a chart. Came down hard way back in the you know in the last six months of 2015 and then bounced and then bounced hard see on this March 4th right here that's when the company reported a blockbuster quarter the beat on top line the beat on bottom line and the raise to forward guidance we'll get to those numbers in a little bit okay so the stock popped big time it went from 144 to 154 basically it popped like 10 bucks and it was a high volume and then it pulled back filled the earnings gap on low volume and then on March 18 popped again big time again on high volume pulled back popped again on high volume on a multiple days of high volume and so every time it pulls back it's on low volume every time it pops it's on high volume but the thing about this it keeps stalling around here around 157 to 160 range let's call it you look at these volume over price resistances it keeps stalling here it pops it pops it pops and low volume pullbacks and it stalls right around here between one we call it between 155 and 160 range what I'm looking for now that the MACD has neutralized, MACD was overbought, it has come down gradually and is starting to stabilize and we're going to probably start to see a bull cross pretty soon. RSI is back to 54 levels, it's no longer hot, it's no longer 70, you know, 65, 70, it's neutralized. And so I'm looking now for this to basically make another run towards 160. I expect this to break out. And I'm looking for a run all the way to 172, 173 level, you know, right here, 173 level, which is the volume of a price res resistance that's going to come into play going all the way back to August of last year. May go all the way to 175, 166 level, but let's be conservative and let's just say 173. So on a breakout through 160, I'm looking for 173, which is good 8% to the upside. It's 13, 14 dollars to the upside, about 8 to 9%. Question is, what's going to get us get us there? Most likely, a fundamental news is going to come out that's going to push us there, and that news is most likely going to be earnings, which comes out on June 2nd, June 2nd after market close. I'm looking for another blockbuster quarter. Okay, so here's the technical. I'm looking for a breakout through 158 to 160 range on high volume as MACD and RSI start to show some stabilization possible bull cross coming soon. And I'm looking for a run all the way to 173. On the option side, right here, this is options, Cooper Industries um, or Cooper Companies. Rarely ever appears on my radar. Never really see any action in this. Um, there's not much open interest if you look at calls or puts. Okay, not much going on over here. But it caught my attention today when at exactly 10 o'clock this morning, somebody came out and bought 470 contracts of deep in the money, high delta, June 140 calls. They bought 470 contracts of deep in the mini high delta, you know, delta is 0.84 here, of June 140 calls with the stock trading at around 156. They bought 470 for it. The bid and ask at the time of the trade was 15. Let me, t let me look at exactly what it was. The bid and ask at the time of trade was uh, 1530 times 1820. Very wide bid and ask spread, 15.30 to time 80, and they paid all the way to $18 per share, or $18 per contract. They started paying 17.20, and then they moved up gradually in small lot sizes, 17.20, then 17.56, 59, 94, 17.99, and then final big block came around $18 per contract on wide, $3 wide, nearly bid and ask spreads. Okay. So aggressive, aggressive bulls, and when you do the math around it, that's 470. Let's call it an average that they paid around 17 dollars and 70 cents per contract. So that's approximately uh, 830 thousand dollar bullish bet. 
that's why it gets my attention in a stock that never appears on my radar they paid you know bought eight hundred thirty thousand dollars worth of call options so we'll there's zero open interest over here so we're gonna come out here on Monday we're gonna check to make sure what the open interest is but I expect all this 470 to be added to the open interest to show you what happened just another way I want to show this chart right here this is a single day one day chart just make it appear see this right here this is exactly at 10 o'clock all right so let me show you actually from here here is from live all right here see this exactly 10 o'clock they came out they bought June 140 calls deep in the money and they started paying these contracts 25 75 and they started off 720 and then they moved up and up and up until they got 470 contracts in total the last one was at 18 dollars and they moved the asking price higher along with it while the bid stayed the same so these were bought all near the offers okay as soon as this happened at 10 o'clock right here that's what I wanted to show you look over here here's the chart here's the daily chart stock stock basically bounced at 10 o'clock from 1575 all the way to 58 and here's the implied volatility consolation look at this big jump right over here all right it jumped from uh, implied volatility spiked in both may april and june i'm oh, sorry a a a may june and july in all three months implied volatility spiked big time so right here it tells you whenever the implied volatility spikes that there are buyers coming into this particular stock so right here is the clarification. So we got bullish activity. They're buying June 140 calls deep in the money. They bought $830,000 worth of calls. Technicals, I'm expecting this consolidation breakout from here through 160 and make a run through 173. Now let's take a look at the fundamentals. Now, this is the chart that I wanted to start with right here. Um, this is the management presentation that the company gave in April. Okay, so this was fairly recent. This was a couple of weeks ago. This was a presentation that they gave in their analyst meeting. Okay, now um, to, just to quickly give you the background here a little bit. You know, I wear contact lenses not all the time, but sometimes, and so uh, I know a little bit about this industry. Been wearing contact lenses for over ten years. Um, the soft contact lens market. This is the global soft contact lens market. There are a bunch of things going on over here. In the last couple years, the industry, and just hear me out, I know some of this is, some of, some of this is going to bore you to the details, okay? In the most recent, in the, in, the, in, the, in the last three years, there's a major shift taking place. And the shift is taking place from moving people away from using hydrogel contact lenses, the ones that you can wear for a couple days to a whole week, to single day silicon based hydrogel hydrogel uh, contact lenses so from hydrogel that go on for multiple days to single day single use silicon based hydrogel contact lenses it's been shift that's taking place for the last three years Europe has been significantly uh, better in terms of adopting this particular shift okay so they have been shifting more dramatically than anybody else and and the u.s has been lagging behind most of the countries in the united states 77 percent of all the contact lenses sold are non-silicon based hydrogels hydrogel cell which means that these people that are using 77 percent do not want to wear it and throw it away every single day they like to wear it and keep it on for several days or for a whole week okay why why aren't they switching like European to the single day use the simple reason is too expensive okay that means you have to basically have a supply of 365 days and when you start doing the math around it this thing even with the lowest cheapest product that's available in the market it ends up costing six to seven hundred dollars a year and most people don't want to spend that kind of money six seven hundred dollars a year just to basically being able to you know move away or basically just get you know wear it single day and just get rid of it so the U.S. has been has been very very slow in adopting, and so in in order to the uh, in order to get the U.S. to catch up to European guys and to everybody else, uh, what Johnson and Johnson is doing is cutting prices dramatically, and that's how it becomes very competitive market. Johnson and Johnson back in January of this year announced almost 10 percent cut across. 10 different product lines one of them was their soft contact lens market in order to capture the market share guess what happened it did not help their market share 
Novartis, which controls Elcon at 25%, has its own issues. Novartis came out, and Novartis shook up their entire management that addresses the contact lens market in order to perhaps increase their marketing efforts or marketing efforts or something else. They literally fired six different executives in the division that runs the contact lens market in order to boost sales. Did not work. Did not help. Bosch and Lom, which controls 9% of the market share, guess what? Who owns Bosch and Lom? It's owned by Valiant, VRX. You want to see what Valiant stock is doing? Do I need to go there? You guys know how Valiant is doing. It's getting destroyed. It has its own issues. SEC investigation, sales declining, all kinds of problems with Valiant. So let's not go over there. You guys know where I'm going with this. Guess what? The only leader that's left that's trying to control and gradually increasing the market share in the soft contact lens market is um, Cooper, right here, at 22% market share, and it continues to rise. Right here is the trend. It's rising every single year. It's rising every single year. Not only it is increasing the market share, on top of that, the actual dynamic, the, the pie itself is growing of the soft contact lens market because re remember what I said, 77% of the United people living in the United States that wear contacts do not wear for single use. Okay, so as the cost comes down, the pie goes higher, gradually people switch from that 77% is going to go down and down and down as more and more people will use it for the single day use. And as the pie increases, on top of that, Cooper is increasing the market share of the increasing pie. That's what's happening. The main product that Cooper sells, it's called MyDay. MyDay was launched in Japan late last year in 2015. Okay, and so they went into some sort of disruptions in the first in the first couple of months, and that's why the stock suffered over here. They did some guidance cut here. They did some guidance cut over here. It took them a little bit of a time to basically get some traction, but then it finally it started to improve. The major major launch. It was first they did a test launch of My Day in the in, in Japan in December, and the major launch a major launch was done in March. All right. So let me tell you how the last quarter looked like. If you go over here. You will see over here, I put this together earlier today. See, back in December, the company reported earnings, and it was a big guidance cut, big miss and big guidance cut. So they, uh, they, they, they posted Q4 EPS of $2 versus $2.11 uh, estimate, missed. Revenues, $455 million versus $474 million, missed. Q1 guidance, which was this quarter that was just recently announced, it was cut big time, a buck fifty-seven versus $1.93 estimate, big cut. Revenues were cut. Tw fiscal year 2016 guidance was cut. 775, 845, so on and so on. But guess what? In the report on March 3rd, two months ago, everything reversed. Why? Because Japan was introduced. My Day was launched in Japan in December of last year with a test launch, with just a test launch, with a major launch that actually happened in March. So that major launch is not even counted in this quarter. March 3rd, EPS $1.83 versus $1.58 estimate, huge beat. Gross margins increased 60 from to 61% versus 57% prior quarter. Revenues $449 million versus $441 million estimate, big beat. Q After cutting guidance right here, fiscal year 2016 EPS guidance was raised to $815 versus $775 estimate, beat. Fiscal year revenue guidance was raised to $1.89 billion versus $1.86 billion okay European integration happened is now in the rearview mirror and Japan major launch was done at the same time I want you to listen to one thing that I pulled out before I got on this call I went into the conference called this is from March 3rd 2016 so this is the last quarter earnings call this is the Q&A session and one analyst asked the question I want you to take a listen to this carefully Thank you. And our next question comes from the line of Matthew Mission of KeyBank. Your line is now open. Hey, good evening. Thanks for taking my questions. Um, I got two uh, real quick. First, I was hoping you could talk about some of the um, Cooper-specific things that you're doing um, in the Americas in response to J&J um, &J and, and their resurgence. That would give us uh, more confidence in, in a return to growth for you guys. And then just secondly, an update on where you're at with the Mighty launch in Japan. 
Well, first on, uh, on you know, what Cooper is doing. Cooper uh, is continuing to execute uh, its plan, uh, which was to roll out uh, uh, My Day as a premium one day, Silicon Heights Shell, and Clarity as a mass market uh, one day, Silicon Heights Shell, with a complete family of Toric, Multifocal, and Sphere. Nothing is changing by way of uh, our focus on executing that, uh, that strategy. Uh, we, uh, uh, we still believe that uh, Silicon Heights Gel belongs in the one-day space, uh, and therefore uh, the fact that 77% of the non-one-day space is already Silicon Heights Gel, we still believe we have the right uh, product portfolio in the right space, and it will convert into Silicon Heights Gels uh, as we go forward. And nothing in any of the numbers we're looking at, by the way, the growth of the one-day market or the growth of silicon hydrogen shells causes us to take pause in that, in that, uh, in that view. Uh, the fact that J&J put up robust numbers, yes, uh, they came out with a new product, and yes, they uh, distributed it widely and deeply. Uh, they had e very easy comps from the prior year, so some of that growth is anomalous. Uh, and uh, you may recall in the prior year they were going through that transition where they were the only one that did adopt UPP uh, or unilateral pricing policy for not only new products uh, wherein we were dedicating a lot of time to the eye care professional to learn the new products. They decided to do it for the products they've had in the marketplace for 10 years. So there was nothing new about it. There was no reason to think that the eye care professional had to dedicate a whole bunch of new time to learn the new technology, um, but it was easy comp. So um, nothing changes from the point of view of our expectation. Uh, as I pointed out, we had very tough comps in the first quarter. We do not have those same tough comps in the second, third, and fourth quarters. Uh, so um, uh, our focus remains on execution. Uh, as far as uh, um, my day in, uh, in Japan, uh, we are uh, uh, rolling it out um, literally this month, which is March, uh, and uh, we're not doing, uh, because of capacity limitations, anything like the J&J &J, uh, Oasis one day uh, rollout where they hit everyone all over, uh, so it will be a, mo a much more orderly um, uh, roll out uh, that will, um, I wouldn't go uh, crazy because of our capital, capital limitations, or our capacity limitations on having high expectations for significantly moving the needle on the top line this fiscal year. Okay, two takeaways in, from that particular question if you did not catch on that. One, the comps were tough in Q1, that's why the last quarter, um, the uh, right here with the big gap down right over here the comps were tough and that's why they were they had to basically lower the guidance in order to meet the expectations of the street the comps get get better comps means year over year comparisons if you're confused when I say comps comps simply means the year over year growth comparisons get better that's why they were able to then come back and raise guidance and I believe they're gonna be able to continue to do so in the next two to three quarters second thing that was a takeaway from that particular line of questioning was simply that they're not worried about Johnson & Johnson cutting prices because Johnson & Johnson did it for the last for the products that they've been selling for the last last 10 years and it still did not have an impact on the market share Johnson & Johnson is really always seen as like competitive threat to Cooper uh, to, to Cooper and it, they just don't see it and frankly it hasn't shown anything material at all in fact in the market share because market share for Cooper continues to rise so with all that background laid out, I think I explained enough logic over here. I think that the stock can continue to rise from here, and I think we're going to see a repeat of the same kind of uh, beat and race as we saw last time. Maybe not to the same extent, but to a little bit. So what I'm expecting is the stock to go up to 172, 173. And um, we have a good fundamental uh, background coming from the earnings. And the lastly, there's option activity taking place on June 140 calls right over here. Okay. Um, you know, uh, typically when I do these videos, and I just want to be clear about one thing, typically when I do these videos, I always present a trade idea, an option trade idea, um, of, so you can actually go and simply execute based on all this discussion over here. 
Um, you know what? There are no disclaimers at attached to this one, so these are just purely my fundamental view and my my view on this particular stock. I'm not working an option master anymore, and I don't have a new home yet where I'm going to go next. I hope to be making an announcement about that pretty soon. And so for all these reasons, I'm not going to present a trade idea. Use this only purely 100% for information purposes. You can run with it, do however you like. You can present your, you can structure a trade idea yourself, whether it's option or just buying call, uh, a stock or anything else but at least you have the background in front of you now but uh, unless I actually find myself a home a new home where I can actually bring you know pre run a market digest in the chat room and present all these videos again with proper disclaimers and the subscriptions and everything I, uh, I can continue to do those videos but I'm not gonna be presenting an official attach myself to a specific trade idea so that's it